بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله so a question for everyone what do you typically do after you finish praying tarawih well what my family and i do we usually come home and we sit and we unwind and we talk and my teenage son just the other day he says to me when i sat down baba did you see the interview with Kyrie Irving Kyrie Irving for those of you who don't don't know He's a famous uh, NBA star. He's a Muslim by Allah's rahmah, and he's fasting in Ramadan. I mean, can you imagine this? You're fasting in the month of Ramadan, and you're an athlete. Uh, NBA game is 48 minutes, and he's running up and down the court, and he's not using that as an, as an excuse ever to break his fast. And I told my son, no, I, I didn't see the interview, and then I watched the interview, and then this is an interview that I wanted to share with everyone. So let's take a listen to what Kyrie had to say. And how... How difficult or not difficult is it playing? Kind of just giving some light to that situation. Yeah, uh, man, uh, Ramadan is a special month, so it's a special time. And yeah, it's just you try not to think about the suffering too much and, and really focus on the journey with God and the path that you're on and, and just stay focused on that and stay disciplined. It's, it's a difficult journey. And, um, you know, to be able to play 48 minutes uh, and, and not do it with having a drink or, or any food in my, in my stomach uh, is nothing short of a miracle. So there's definitely a universal God out there that's protecting me. And I got to give credit to, to him. Oh, sorry. Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and increase him. First thing I want to do is thank him for wearing that Palestine bracelet. I don't know if everyone saw. He was wearing a bracelet uh, with the Palestinian flag. Kyrie representing, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our beloved brothers and sisters and children in Gaza, Ya Rabbi Akareem, and alleviate their suffering, Ya Arham Rahimin. And yeah, he, he nailed it. I mean, the month of Ramadan is, it's not easy. It's difficult. It's hard. You know, we're abstaining from things that we all naturally love. I know many of us can't wait to break our fast, not with food, but probably with a cup of coffee because we want our caffeine so badly. And it's a journey with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, very often when we talk about Ramadan, we say, you know, we fast because we want to feel the suffering of those that don't have. Maybe people are hungry, so we want to feel hungry. Well, that's an aspect of it, but that's not why we fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he draws our attention so beautifully in the Quran as to why we fast. And I want to bring up this ayah that's in Surah Al-Baqarah. That you can all see here to ayah number 183 where allah says "O believers fasting is prescribed for you as it was for those before you so perhaps you will be mindful of allah so you can attain taqwa this concept of being conscious of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times all places and all states so how does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala force us into that well, he puts the chains on us when it has to do with our physical desires because he wants us to unlock the spiritual realities that are within us. Remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, he referred to the body in the genesis of creation about being created from stinking mud. But then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the secret, the soul within him, he ordered all of the angels to prostrate to him. So there's something in each one of us, this spiritual reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to unlock. And so how does he help by his generosity us unlock it? Well, he puts the chains on us when it comes to food, drinking, and our sexual desires. He tells us, no, no, from this time to that time, you can't do it, and you should be in my remembrance as much as you can because what happens over time we start to feel light we start to feel something special inside us the soul starts to get fed by all of this quran that we should be reading and all of these prayers that we should be doing so that we can have taqwa and the messenger of god sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi, he also tells us very beautifully about fasting and i want to share uh, this hadith that we have with everyone. I'm going to bring it up on screen right now. You see it there before you. Now, the hadith that we're sharing here are all a reference uh, for everyone, ta'ala, so that you can see it yourself and you can find it. And the Prophet, 
sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama. He says, every good deed of the son of Adam would be multiplied. A good deed receiving a tenfold to 700 reward. Meaning every time we do something, in general, we can get 10 times the reward to 700. That's the amazing generosity of Allah. And Allah says, with the exception of fasting. For it is done for me and I will reward for it. For one abandons his passions and food for my sake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recognizing out of his mercy that we're abandoning things that we want so badly and we're so used to and our bodies are calling us to our passions, our passions of eating, drinking, and our physical desires. But we do it, why? For the sake of Allah. And Allah alone rewards for that. And look at this, subhanah. <laughs> look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. And he said, there are two occasions of joy for the one who's fasting. Two times that that person who's fasting is going to be so, so happy. What are they, ya Allah? Number one, when they break their fast. <laughs> you know? When you have your cup of coffee. When you have your caffeine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes that. Yes. You know, anyone that tells you, oh, fasting is so easy, I don't have any trouble. Okay, mashallah, but that's that's not the average person. The average person, we all go through our struggles fasting. And so when do we find the joy? When we have our samosa, or in my case, when I get my cup of coffee, when I break my fast. And that's a joy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes. And when is the second joy that we get? He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when he meets his Lord can imagine what reward are we going to get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving up all of these things that we've been giving up in the month of Ramadan and he doesn't stop there and he tells us that the breath of the person that's fasting is sweeter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more fragrant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than that of musk so we see like all of these physical things you know we think maybe we have bad breath or we're tired, all of these things in their reality with Allah are drawing us closer to Allah. So this month of Ramadan, this struggle that we're having, observing our fast, is so that we can unlock a human potential within each one of us. And that's the potential of our soul, of having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It starts us on an amazing spiritual journey. And the more that we do these spiritual acts, the closer we get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the more my soul, my heart becomes purified and the more I can receive from the light of Allah. But the more I put the weights of my physical desires upon me, the more difficult it is for my soul to receive the nourishment that it needs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every year wants to wake us up to our spiritual potential by forcing us into a fast so that we can taste what the spirit is possibly capable of. And Kyrie Irving, he's so amazingly articulated that reality with that short clip of that interview that he had. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him and he keeps him on a path that he loves. So what's interesting, that night, I'm sure many of the people in the States who watched the highlights, Kyrie hit a uh, game-ending buzzer beater to win the game. So you know what? We're going to leave you with what uh, what Kyrie did that shocked the world. Let's show them the shot. But inbound, Kleba looking in for Irving. Irving for the win! Oh, 